So CFA Institute, I think I mentioned, CFA Institute's mission is to lead the investment profession globally through ethics and education. And as part of that, we administer the CFA program, or the CFA designation. And the CFA designation, I'm going to talk about that in a few minutes, the specifics about the program. But at a high level, it's recognized, um, not by us, but by education uh, authority, that it's a graduate level equivalent investment designation. So it's, of course, very specific to investing, um, and it's rec recognized as a graduate level degree. Uh, it's self-study, uh, and if you, once you complete this uh, program, you would be an investments expert, if you will, and you'll also uh, be recognized as having the highest uh, level of ethics and degree of ethics uh, of investment professionals. So the investment community recognizes the designation for those two very real elements. That is to say, again, high degree of ethics and very serious investment professional. It's a high uh, level of knowledge about a variety of asset classes. We currently have 220,000 candidates all over the world. Uh, about 60% of those candidates are not in the U.S., so they're outside of the U.S. Uh, you can see this, that's the, the uh, dark blue line, or bars, is the growth of the <coughs> candidates. These are people sitting for levels one, two, or three combined. And then the light blue is the number of members. So once you complete the CFA designation, that's not the end of your journey. That's not the end of your studies. It's actually the end of the beginning. Okay, it means that you have the designation, uh, but it's a lifelong, lifetime commitment, and it conveys that commitment to uh, the investment community and to potential employers. By the way, well, the saving program is uh, three exams. Um, their level one is given in June and December of each year, and then levels two and three are given in June of each year. Um, the, the exam levels, each level covers slightly different areas. Uh, the first level is more generalist, so you cover things like economics and quantitative methods, um, so it's a more broad overview of, the, of investing and what investing is all about, and some of the things that affect investing. So it connects, so you can see here, it connects financial reporting to economics. So I don't know if you get that in your classes now, but it's a way of, of um, more formally drawing those connections together and thinking about how the macro economy impacts, say, financial statement analysis and organizations' profits, profitability. Uh, and then level two, you, you delve more into specific asset classes. In many of my slides, I showed a host of asset classes. And I didn't talk about what those asset classes were um, because of lack of time. But through the CFA program, you would be an expert. You would be very knowledgeable about a host of asset classes. Um, as it shows here, we just show a few here, but equity, fixed income, derivatives, um, and alternative investments. So you go into a fair amount of detail um, on what is an asset class, how is that asset class constructed, how does it differ from other asset classes. Because with that information, uh, then not only can you build portfolios of asset classes, but then in level three, <coughs> we do portfolio management, so you put all that together. You put all the knowledge from level one and level two together in such a way as to form portfolios and perform um, or put together portfolios that meet your client's goals and objectives. No, ultimately, um, by the way, the CFA designation is all about clients and about helping clients meet their goals and objectives and putting their interests first. Uh, and so it's important that we have the, the depth to uh, do that uh, objective, meet that objective in a robust way. So that's essentially uh, level three. What you'll see, the commonality, is the ethics. So we, that is an important part of the CFA program throughout, not only throughout the exam, but we in, in expect it to be uh, important throughout your career. Um, uh, students often ask about pass rates, uh, so pass rates vary by each level. Um, <clears throat> level level one pass rate is about a third, about 33%, uh, and level two is a little bit higher, maybe 
36 or 37 and level three is slightly higher, maybe 40%. Varies year to year, uh, but it's somewhere between 30 and 40% at each level, the pass rate. Uh, so uh, not everybody passes. Uh, and so then people say, well, how do I pass? And I say, study, uh, <laughs> study. So what we, we, we ask people that pass, we ask them how much do you study? <coughs> People that pass study about 200 hours on average. So 200 hours for this group, not such a big deal really because you're, you're very much geared towards studying. Um, so success means studying, but not, you know, you know, it's a few months worth, of course, 200 hours is a few months worth. Um, if you don't study, you probably won't. that once you complete the program, as I said, it's the beginning you know, of, of your career, the beginning of your journey, and, I, and that's very true. Uh, because once you uh, become a charter holder, you become part of a, a global community. As I said, 110,000 people. Uh, and it, it's a global network. Uh, it's a professional network that is very congenial. So it's very collaborative, it's very friendly. Um, we're all part, if you will, of the same family. Uh, and so we form, I uh, mentioned social media earlier, um, so with the, app, with, the, um, with the growth of social media in recent years, it's made that membership and that community even stronger. Uh, so there are ways that we connect with one another uh, through social media, uh, through conferences, through events, uh, that we stay connected and we help each other uh, do a better job, right? We, we help each other get better at what we do. And so it's, it's a community of sharing. It's a mentorship community and a, a real collaborative community. So I don't want to... Um, um, I don't want to miss making that point because it's a really important point about if you, if you decide that you want to journey into a, an investment career, uh, the CFA designation is suddenly you know, your, your gateway to this very strong, growing community.